Hey guys, here's the rest of that Evan Carmichael interview. It is quite a long one, it's about 30 minutes long, so I don't expect all of you to watch all of it, but hopefully if you're a YouTuber or a creative entrepreneur, or really just a person, then you might get something out of it. Hope you guys enjoy. Feel free to skip forward if you find it a bit boring or you get tired of my face, so yeah, hope you'll enjoy. I can't wink, I can't, I can't see me winking in the, there you go. Okay, bye. Hey Evan, thanks so much for uh, for taking the time to do this. I uh, really appreciate it. So thanks for thanks for setting this up. It's a pleasure to be here, Chris. Let's do it. Cool. Um, yeah. So thanks for sending through uh, your book, your one word. Um, yeah, I just kind of uh, wanted to ask a few questions about it, if that's uh, if that's okay. Yeah. Uh, so if I'm honest, at first uh, I was kind of skeptical when you sent it through, kind of thinking, you know, oh, your one word. How can everything you believe in and, and you're passionate about kind of be compressed into one sort of word. Um, but after reading it, I, I really enjoyed it and I really felt it kind of resonated with me. Um, so could you maybe just kind of briefly explain for people what your one word is? Sure. The concept is I believe everybody has one main core value that they have. And once you understand what that is, then you can start to live a life and for the entrepreneurs out there run a business that's a lot more meaningful. I think a lot of people have a lot more potential than they're currently realizing. Not that you walk around and, and you hate your life and your life sucks. I mean, that's some people, but there's a lot of people who are still doing good work and are enjoying what they do and, and want to do more, but they just feel like I'm not close to my potential. I know it could be doing more. I know there's a, a, an extra gear somewhere there and I don't know how to reach it. And for me, a lot of it just comes down to self-awareness. If you understand your main core value and then you surround yourself with people who believe in the same thing you believe, you can just go so much further, so much faster and have a bigger impact. And mine is belief. And for anybody who's watched my YouTube channel or any of my content kind of oozes belief. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a marketing thing. It's not just a, how do I want people to see me and talk about me? It has to be authentically from where you are from, what you are feeling, mm -hmm. and then you're bringing that to your marketing and to everything that you're doing in your business and also in your life. What, what was your one word? What did you come down to? I know you kind of talk a bit in the in the book about how um, your one word can be a bigger thing, which kind of divides down into smaller subsets. Um, but I wasn't sure if, if my one word should be uh, entertain, because I feel like that's what I do when I'm on stage and I want people to have a good time and... Um, that kind of resonates with me. Uh, I'm a drummer and I kind of like pull silly faces and do stick tricks because I want to entertain people. I feel like kind of is me. But also this other side to what I do is um, education. I'm very big on that. And although it's both music, I feel almost conflicted between my one word being either that or that. And then I thought maybe it could be like a, a bigger word. It could be, you know, um, uh, joy, you know, something like that. I thought the one word could be joy or happiness because... You know, hopefully I'm bringing happiness to, to people by entertaining them or I bring happiness to the kids that I teach and helping them learn a, um, an instrument, you know, helping them learn music. So I'm kind of a bit torn uh, about what my one word is. And I feel I, I'd love to get your thoughts on this. I know you said you kind of shouldn't um, ask other people what your one word should be, but I think it's something I might need to do a bit more soul searching and thought about, you know. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what I got. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on if people feel they have like, lots of one words or they're not sure exactly what their one word is. I'd love to just give a wee bit, uh, say a wee bit about that. Yeah, so it's super common mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning especially. And I think it's worth spending more time on. You know, in my opinion, this is one of the most important exercises you'll ever do in your life. And uh -huh. so if it doesn't happen in a week, like don't freak out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Spend a little more time reflecting and thinking. Yeah. Uh, a couple exercises that help again is think back to all the moments that have made you come alive and what you really enjoy and like mm -hmm. is there something that just keeps coming up from mm -hmm. your best friends growing up you know was it is because they were educating you that that's why you were their best friend there's, mm -hmm. there's probably a feeling there that yeah. resonates yeah um and so the goal with all this is all of those happy amazing moments that you've had in the past that maybe occurred by random now we want to try to attract more of that into your life with more purpose mm -hmm. ongoing um, there is the idea of being able to combine two into one. Mm -hmm. And even the fact that you have two or think you have two mm -hmm. is still way better than most people, right? Yeah. So like, it's not failure. Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, so many companies you look at have this list of 13 core values mm -hmm. and 
And if you ask the CEO or you ask anybody in the company, they couldn't even name what the 13 core values are without looking them up. Yeah. So like, you're not actually living them if you can't, if you don't even know what they are. Yeah, totally. And so having two is better than what you started with. So that's great progress. Yeah. Now, if we can get distill it down even more, it makes life a lot easier. Um, I use my father in the book as an example, mm -hmm. where he had something similar, if you remember that part where yeah. he... Uh, he had this, he loves like motorcycles and he loves adventure and he loves that drive, mm -hmm. but he's also a really nice person. And he's like, well, how do I, like, he, he believes in being honest and fair and just one of the nicest people you ever meet. So how do those, like, they seem totally opposite. Yeah. Adventure and yeah. motorcycles and then just being nice to people. And he combined them under heart mm. where heart could be like the blood pumping activity and heart is also the, the niceness and kindness and how you treat people. And so it just provides a, a better map. And so one might fit under the other if you have multiple, mm -hmm. or there's a, a more meta one that uh, involves everything that you're doing. Uh, I encourage people once they go through the process to figure out their credo, and the credo is your definition of the one word, is taking, for me, believe into hashtag believe. You get to define what that hashtag means. Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna go with joy, you get to define what joy means and part of that may be education part of that may be entertaining and part of it may be something else and so that removes some of the restrictions because some people have a natural uh definition of what joy means mm -hmm. and there's definitely part of that that like common definition is probably something that resonates with you but there's still going to be this other thing that is only for chris like this mm -hmm. is chris's view on it that um i think if you can figure that part out uh really helps and for people who are going through the process Again, one, it's normal to have multiple. There's, you know, clarity is power. So getting it down to one will just give you more clarity and more power. Yeah. It allows it, it allows people to talk about you, allows you to set the course for your life and your future decisions. And um, if, if you're at that point, I'd be looking to get one, does one fit under the other? So it's education. And really it's like value. So it's not just what you do, mm -hmm. it's what you value. Yeah. So I help entrepreneurs. But it's not my value. My value is believe. Yeah. And so education and entertainment is part of what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and it helps a ton of people. And, and I'm sure you love seeing the smiles on people's faces mm -hmm. or the like aha moment that you spark by having a conversation with them. Yeah. Uh, what's the feeling? What's the value behind that? That like, why do you want to educate people? Why do you want to entertain people? <laughs> Yeah, I think um, so. It's it's funny you bring bring that up actually because I feel I read the book. Um, I read it fairly quickly actually. I think especially being quite skeptical about it, um, it took me a while to get into it. But then when I did, uh, I finished it incredibly quickly. I think um, I actually kind of read the the last half of it in one day. And I don't, okay. I don't yeah, I don't usually kind of read books very quickly, you know. Um, and I think it kind of is almost like that. Um, Simon Sinek thing about the golden circle, you know, the, the what, why, how, it kind of goes a bit deeper into why you do what you do. Um, and it's not just like uh, coming up with one word and that's it. It actually really made me, and, and, and I still want to think, you know, I know what I do, and but I need to really think about why I'm, I'm doing it. And I know, and you kind of said in the book as well, you know, it, it can't just be for money, which I agree with and these sorts of things, you know, you really have to work out why you're you're doing your one word and what that kind of represents to you so i got a lot from that and i think i need to spend a bit more a bit more time uh on that you know a bit more kind of time thinking about my one word but uh yeah no that that's a it's a great answer um yeah i i loved how it was really practical i almost wasn't expecting that um you know you can okay. go into quite a lot of depth about the one word but then you go into uh, a lot of depth about you know building your your team and your environment and your rituals and these sorts of things um, which is great, you know, you're always, you know, you end each chapter with this kind of summing up thing, which is like a really Cal Newport sort of thing to do. And it's like, it's great because I think like as humans, we kind of read a book and we kind of need to be reminded at the end of the chapter, like what we were just told. And then at the right. end of the book, the very end, you kind of have this big summing up of the whole, the whole book, which is really good because it really makes you just kind of in those last few pages go, right, wow, this is like all that I was kind of told and learned about in the whole book, you know, what do, what do I do with it, you know? And I was just interested to, to ask you, because you've got your, your kind of YouTube channel as well. There's a lot of people that read these things or watch your videos, um, but then they don't take action. So just your thoughts on, on, on that, because I know myself, it's very easy to read these sorts of books 
and almost you know procrastinate by watching you know all of your YouTube videos and these sorts of things and that almost has the opposite effect you know what would you what advice would you give to people for them to actually act and, and, and do the next step yeah I think even a step before that is uh, and big congrats congrats to you for being a skeptic but then saying you know what I'm still gonna give it a, a chance like yeah. I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do one exercise we're gonna read 10 pages and just see yeah. uh, I see that happen a, just a lot. Uh, even looking at some of the videos, there'd be videos that people, one of my top 10 videos, people won't watch because of, they've already made an assumption about the person that is coming on. And then like, hey, there could be a really valuable lesson from that person that you can learn and you just shut that off because they don't look like you or you had some assumption coming in. So I think I think being a skeptic is good too. Like I love dealing with skeptics. It's great. Mm -hmm. uh, but at least an open-minded skeptic, right? Like you come yeah. in and you say, I don't think this is going to work, but I'm still going to give it a few minutes just to see. Yeah. And so, that, so that's great for you. I think a lot of people don't do enough of that, still keeping kind of an open mind about it. Mm -hmm. um, I agree with you on the follow-up. Uh, that is probably going to be a future book. Uh, my next book is probably going to be around the environment, habits, routines. We touch on it a little bit mm -hmm. in this book. Um, but this book is mostly about how to find what your core value is, how to find your one word, and then how to apply it to bring in more money as a business and how to apply it to build a team and build a company. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to be an entrepreneur, Chapters, you know, sections two and three aren't as relevant, mm -hmm. but everybody could use section one. Uh, it's already a, a long-ish enough book, right? Like it's mm -hmm. a it's a full book just doing yeah. that piece. Yeah, uh, it was actually twice as long initially, and we cut wow. half of it out. Uh, and I did really want it to be practical knowledge, uh, and it's also why we track other businesses from the guy at a fifty thousand dollar business to half a million and a million and five million, 150 yeah. million, giving examples all the way through. I love the wee example of Roberta Blake there. I thought that was great. You know, just especially as a YouTuber, I liked, I loved it. His little snippets were in, in the, your one word. I thought that was great. Just as we, as we know. Yeah. So the idea behind showing examples, so I tell my story yeah. throughout, but I also want to show other people's examples so that there's always somebody to relate to. Cause a lot of people can relate to Roberto. Roberto's another YouTuber. He's got a lot of great content. His one word is awesome. Mm -hmm. And, he built a $50,000 full-time income for himself around his one word. Mm -hmm. So for a lot of people, that's that's the goal. Like I just want to build a full-time business for myself because I hate my job and I want to do something important. For other people, you know, for somebody who's already in business and has a million dollar business, Roberto's story may not be as impactful. Like I've already gone through that stage. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to show that no matter where you are at, there's somebody you can learn from who's had success using it. This isn't, this isn't a strategy only to be a full-time freelancer and it's not only a strategy for big companies it's every step along the way um, so the book is mostly about awareness and some practical things to do to help your business grow it doesn't mean that you're gonna do it you mm. know just because you found your one word it gives you a, a roadmap it gives you a compass it gives you the thing to look at but it doesn't mean you're actually gonna take that path yeah. and I think for a lot of people especially entrepreneurs, we start and we stop and we start and we stop and we have a great day and then we wake up the next day and where's the energy and motivation? It's just mm. part of the roller coaster ride. Yeah, totally. And so that's that's the main reason behind my YouTube channel is to give daily motivation and ideas to help you go. It's for me, right? To have these famous people who've accomplished a lot by me hanging out with them, mm -hmm. I get more motivated every day. Like, okay, let's go. Today's got to be a good day. Let's do it. Um, and so I think the summary to help people who are kind of going through that is whenever you find your one word, whatever it is, you want to then think about the moments in your life where you have felt the most alive, most energetic, most bold, most like courageous, most I can do this, most self-confident. What was happening? You know, were you watching a YouTube video? Did you have a conversation with somebody? Were you listening to Chris Anderson? And like, what was it that made you feel amazing? And then put that into your morning routine. So you start your day with that every day. Because for me, it's a daily reset. I need it every day. It's not like I, ha I hear a great interview and then I'm I'm set for the month. Like I need a daily reset. Mm. Some people may have more, more stamina or tolerance or whatever it is. I need a daily reset. Mm. And so just thinking about how you can factor that into your daily routine. And so the next book that I'm thinking about... Um, the one that I'm going to write and like be, you know, in depth is going to be around routines, habits, environment, 
so that uh, it kind of pairs with your one word. You need the mm -hmm. self-awareness to understand what your routine and environment should be, but you need the consistency so you actually follow through on the things that you say you want to do. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, I'm, I, I know you kind of uh, seen some of your videos, you're kind of talking about you're in the process of writing other books, so uh, looking forward to that. Um, just talking about your, your YouTube channel as well, because um, I, I do love your stuff. Um, and I've kind of, it's one of those things, you know, I've kind of seen your stuff a bit more in the past, but um, I think it's just with, with you uploading so much content, it's kind of coming up more of my suggestions and all that sort of stuff. And I wondered, and I have a few inklings as to the, the idea behind this, but how can you create uh, so much content? I know, I'm sure you have an amazing team and you kind of go into that in the book. Um, and I, from what I understand, you kind of do batch recordings and these sorts of things. But I think in the last like five days, you've put out, 18 videos and I think like that's amazing that's like the amount of videos that I put out in five months not just like five days you know um and as a kind of as a youtuber with hardly any subscribers um it would be nice to be able to create more content and, and do that so I'm just interested on on how you create so much content so that you can put out two three videos every day <laughs> Yeah, so we were about three videos a day. Uh, and again, at the start, it was just, I did everything. And I wasn't doing a video a day, mm. even one video a day. I was doing a video a week max. Yeah. Mostly because it just took me a long time to edit. And I didn't make it enough of a big priority. I was still just testing. I think when you're starting anything, you test. You don't go on YouTube or any other business idea and just be like, I'm all in, I'm going to spend all my time on this. It's like yeah. you test and then you see, you know, yeah. you, you're dating and you know, you see if you want to get married or not. Yeah. Uh, so that, that, that was what it was like at the start. As soon as I started making a little bit of money, I, I hate spending money until I'm making money. It's just yeah. one of my principles. Uh, so as soon as I started making some money, then I poured that back into the channel and the first person I hired was a part-time editor. And that allowed me to move to a video a day mm -hmm. from one a week to one a day. And I was at one a day for a while. And then as I started making more money, then I could put it back into my team. Mm -hmm. And then I got, we have, now we have two and a half full-time editors. We've got a camera guy. We've got a full-time researcher. We've got uh, two people in the comments, uh, another guy helping out with graphics and another guy helping with sounds. And I don't know mm -hmm. how many people that all makes, but, yeah. Um, building a team helps, but it's not like you just like, it's, it's unfair to compare a new YouTuber's journey to where I'm at now, mm. because you can't, you're not going to go out and raise X, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars or whatever it is to, to, you know, compete on that level. It's just, if you can use that as inspiration to say like, Hey, I can get to that. That's great. Mm. A lot of people use that as a, as a kick down instead of a kick forward and say, well, I can't compete because they're too, right. Just. You want to, you can look at my journey at the start. Mm. You know, I sucked at the very beginning. You're already better on camera than I was <laughs> Thank you. beginning, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm 5,000 videos in, yeah. you know, so yeah. you better get good at something, anything after doing it 5,000 times, yeah. right? Yeah. Hopefully you have, get some kind of decent skills at it. Yeah. Um, so that was a path to going daily. And, and I think if just like really tactical YouTube advice now for anybody who's starting to get into that game. Mm. The most important thing right now for YouTube is consistent content. And I, I'm just about to release a video mm. um, on my channel. Maybe by the time this comes out, it'll be live. Mm -hmm. I've analyzed all the different paths that I've grown my channel. And I've had people shout out my, my channel, like 50 Cent shouted out yeah. my channel, and Floyd Mayweather shouted out my channel, and like yeah. huge actors and entrepreneurs have shouted out my channel. And that always leads to like a nice spike but it doesn't lead to subscribers. Mm. It leads to a lot of views one day and then it drops okay. off and yeah. you don't get subscribers from it. I've done a lot of collaborations with, mm. with some big YouTubers, a lot of small YouTubers, people with million plus subscribers, people with a hundred subscribers. I've done yeah. collabs all over the place. It doesn't, it also doesn't lead to as much uh, subscribers as creating consistent content. Mm. Um, same thing with off platform. If you're this, the common advice is like promote it on Twitter and promote it on Instagram and sending mm. you a newsletter and all that stuff. And it helps, but still nowhere near close to just pr providing daily consistent content. And so 
I love doing collaborations because I love it. Like I love talking to you. I love mm. talking to other YouTubers. It's just, it fuels me much more than I don't care how many subscribers I'm going to get yeah. from being with Chris today. I just, I love it. So I do it, right? Mm. It's a labor of love. Yeah. Um, but if I was being, you know, from a strategy point of view, I want to grow my YouTube channel. I would ignore trying to get celebrity shout outs. I would ignore trying to do collabs, which mm. is well, always one of the top advice, mm. unless you can hit way above your class. Yeah. You know, like I did a video with the guy, million subscribers, and mm -hmm. it led to a thousand subscribers in the first day for mm -hmm. me, and maybe two, three thousand overall, mm -hmm. which for some people is like, that's insane, right? That's mm -hmm. crazy growth. I'm getting 1,500 subscribers a day. So it gave me a nice boost, yeah. but it's not, for the amount of work to do the yeah. collab and make the, make the introductions and meet them and mm -hmm. all of that stuff, the relationships, it's not worth it if yeah. your main goal is just to grow subscribers. So I know, especially when people are starting up, they don't have a lot of time. They don't have, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're you're doing other things. You have a job, you have school, really, yeah. everything else. Mm -hmm. I would say stop focusing on everything else related to your channel except for content. Yeah. Don't worry about promoting on Twitter. Don't worry about trying to do collaborations. Don't worry about getting shadows from anybody else. What YouTube values, at least right now, they may change in six months, but what they value right now is consistent content. And if you go daily from mm -hmm. whatever you're at now, it'll you do that for 30 days, 60 days, you'll see a huge growth in your channel compared yeah. to any other strategy you've used before. Mm -hmm. And so just eliminate all the other stuff that people are talking about as strategies to grow yeah. and just go daily, mm -hmm. do that alone, and you'll see good growth in your channel right now on YouTube. It seems to be, thank you. It seems to be like um, the kind of thing going around YouTube right now is that you know going daily really plays to the algorithm and the, the watch time change that kind of happened, and that's why you know uh, vloggers and gaming channels that's why they're doing so well um, is because they can upload daily and they can upload kind of more long form content. But the interesting point that I'm at is I'm kind of going well. I'm in the position I'm in, and as you're saying, you know, I'm doing these different jobs, um, and I'm lucky if I can create one good video a week you know um, and I often kind of struggle with the difference between quality and quantity um, but I guess for me from what you're saying it's probably like you know there's no point in just releasing one uh, good quality video a month but you also want to just get that consistency of trying to get daily and probably not seeing that as something that I start tomorrow but seeing that is over the next few months I'm starting to upload upload more you know I think when you when you see yourself in the Casey Neistat and the Gary Vaynerchuk's it can be very easy to see oh they're doing this amount of stuff and it's kind of it's doing really well and it's exploding you know I want to do daily but I, I can't or oh, I want to create this amazing you know I want to have this amazing camera and stuff like this but I can't you know but it's probably about just like thinking what the the next step is because like as you were saying for you there was a time when you were in the position that I'm in and you you couldn't do the stuff that you're you're doing now you know um, yeah, so let's uh, let's address a couple of things in there. First, mm. I believe that the quantity leads to the quality. Okay. Like, how do you get good at anything? You practice. Yeah. You want to get better at YouTube? You have to practice. Like, if you're making one video a week versus one video a day, you're going to get better a yeah. lot faster. Mm -hmm. Most of my videos at the beginning sucked, you know, <laughs> and, and as I got better, I was doing the best I could, right? With the gear that I had and my mm. skills, it was the best that I could. I'm still proud of the... The message, the message was still quality, just my delivery, my execution, the editing, it all sucked. But right. what's the alternative? Just do nothing, right? Yeah. So the quantity leads to the quality. Okay. Right now, especially as a small YouTuber, like people aren't really paying that much attention to the channel. So look, go daily, get better at it. Every mm. time you do it, you're trying something new, practicing. Mm -hmm. And you're when you fail, you fail small. Where That's even true. now I put out series that don't work. And I'm failing big. Like I lose subscribers when I put mm. out a crappy video. Mm. And and I'm still willing to go and do that because it's important for me to get better and to find the winners. Um, the top 10 series started as a test. It wasn't mm. like, I know that this is what's going to win on my channel and that's how I'm going to define, you know, mm. it, was an, it was a test. I yeah. thought I could do one a week. I thought, how can we do one a day? There's not, that's yeah. 300, you know, how many yeah. people... There aren't that many people. How do we do that many mm. versions? Yeah. I thought one a week is enough. Like yeah. 52 weeks, we could probably do one a week. There's probably 50 people, you know, a year that we yeah. could profile. Yeah. So the quantity leads to the quality. So, mm. you know, the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. Okay. The second thing is just just adopting the mindset that once you, once you look at it as your goal, this is what I want to do, 
versus looking at all the roadblocks and reasons why you can't do it, mm -hmm. things start to shift. I'm not a gamer. I'm not a vlogger. Mm -hmm. I, I've played, I have maybe one video on there gaming where I play like a game of League of Legends mm -hmm. and vlogging, I might do like twice a month. Yeah. So I can make daily, con I can make three times a day yeah, without true. vlogging yeah. and without gaming, right? So, so you don't have to be a gamer. You don't have to be a vlogger. Like, don't let that be a, a restriction. Is it mm. easier for them? Sure. But they're still putting in tons of work every day. Mm. It's thinking, what message do you have? What, how do you want to educate people or how do you want to, entertain you people or how do you want to spread joy yeah. and how do you do that on a daily basis and once you decide like you may say okay i'm not able to do it right now but i'm gonna make this my goal i want to get there it's important i've heard it enough times or I, at least for the skeptic right mm -hmm. you'd be like you know i don't think it's gonna work but i'm gonna give it a shot try. i'm gonna try it for 30 days and see mm -hmm. and if it works i'll keep going mm -hmm. it's it's Right now, the single most important YouTube strategy, if I knew that, and honestly, when I started, that wasn't the most important strategy. Because mm, yeah. you can go weekly, you can go monthly and still grow like crazy because the views are more important than anything else. Mm. YouTube's updated and changed. But if, if I was going back, if I was starting right now, and YouTube was my main goal, and I really want to explode my channel, then I could find ways, like I could edit faster, I yeah. could try to build a team, I could make different videos mm -hmm. to try to make sure that I'm going daily. And it's daily with with um, not live videos. Live is its own, I don't know if you do anything yeah. live, but live doesn't count. Yeah. You gotta go daily with, with content, content yeah. right? Um, so you could, you could double what you're doing right now. Mm. And yes, it has to be quality stuff. Mm. And then just have the, have the goal of, I'm gonna ignore everything else and I'm just gonna create consistent content and that's my goal is to get the daily brilliant, brilliant. daily wow. daily is the bare minimum like yeah you'll see another one you go twice a day yeah i'm at three a day and there is a jump between two and three but it's mm -hmm. smaller where between one and two there's still another huge yeah. jump that you'll get in subscribers and whenever youtube i went to a youtube event mm -hmm. uh in la uh just outside la i don't know a couple months ago mm -hmm. for bigger youtubers uh, 100,000 plus, you had to have 100,000 subscribers on your channel. Yeah. Um, and I'm sitting at, back then it was like 700, 650. Mm. I'm, I'm close to 800 yeah, now. Yeah. Uh, and I'm talking about these strategies and, and they're all like, oh, that's so much work and I can't mm. do it. And I don't know how I'm going to get that going. And I'm thinking, this is awesome. Yeah. Like you guys are all missing out. You're going to get, you could like right now, you know, Chris Anderson could go crush the people ahead of you in mm. your space yeah. just by making more content because those guys don't want to do the work or yeah. they're focused on other things. Like the people that I've passed on YouTube, I consider myself to be not as good a speaker as uh, Eric Thomas, mm. a hip hop preacher. Yeah. But he's fallen off on YouTube. He yeah. doesn't produce as much content. And great, he has other business goals. He's doing other things. It's not only about YouTube. I get that. Mm -hmm. But I'm able to quickly pass him because just understanding how YouTube works a little bit better. You can destroy your competition who may even be better than you, more yeah. talented, more funny, more whatever. Mm -hmm. But you just are putting in the work to understand YouTube's algorithm better. Um, so all those guys who are at that event, I'm like, Guys, one a week. You're complaining about one a week. That's mm. minimum. Yeah. You should really be doing two, two a day. Sorry, not not one a day. You got to get to two a day. Mm. One a day is, is baby steps. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Totally. Uh, so like, just changing the mindset. Like that's my goal. I'm gonna find a way to go out and do it. Cool. And it could be repurposing old content. Like, mm. so right now we're talking about YouTube. Maybe a previous guest talked about YouTube. Mm -hmm. So you you release this long form video of us talking to the interview with Evan. Great. Yeah, and then I you mean, take the next step of all these other people talking that. about YouTube. And that's bonus content for you. Mm -hmm. Right. Don't assume everybody's going to watch every video. Get mm -hmm. out of that head. I don't need everybody to watch every video. Mm -hmm. Think of you. You have a YouTube channel. It's not a show. It's a channel. channel. You know, when you turn on. ABC or NBC or HBO or whatever it is, mm. you're not watching every show. You're yeah. not watching everything on Netflix. Mm. And when you start to see yourself as a channel and not just a show, then you start to build towards it. I wish I could do more. Like I don't have enough good videos to launch five videos a day, but if I could <laughs> well, do it, I would do it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it works. Right. No, that's, um, it's one of those things that um, is both like scary and exciting you know um but yeah it'll just uh yeah i'd like to get on that just kind of for for people that are watching apart from obviously your 
your YouTube channel that I'll link down below and stuff and at the end of this video. Um, where else can people find you online? Yeah, so YouTube is where most of my content production is going out. I live on the other social networks. If, if you hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, that's mostly where I'm on the other platforms. Um, I often do, while I'm working out on my treadmill, I'll do like Q&A sessions. So if you have mm. questions, that's probably the best place to hit me. Uh, and then for the book, wherever you buy books, Barnes and Nobles online, you know, wherever the big, whatever the big store mm -hmm. is in Scotland, yeah. you know, you can, <laughs> you can pick it up there. Um, yeah. Bro, I'll, and I'll link uh, all your book stuff down below. And yeah, just to say again, thanks for saying it. I, re I really got a lot from it. And it's something that isn't just a one read thing. You know, I think it'll take me a bit of time to really go through and and really do the stuff that you're kind of chatting about in it. So uh, yeah, I'm going to re recommend it to tons of people. And uh, thanks for saying it through. And thanks for this as well. I really appreciate it, Evan. Thank you. Awesome, Chris. Thanks right. for having me, man. Cheers. Thank you. Right, right. I have to go and actually give some music lessons now, so I probably uh, probably should go and uh, educate some people and work out what my one word is in the way. So <laughs> go spread some more joy, man. Well, dude, bro. I really cool. appreciate it. Evan. Thanks again.